So there is bombshell proof that Amber Heard went after Elon Musk just like she went after Johnny Depp, with Musk going so far as to label the relationship brutal as he talks about the psychological turmoil, as he talks about the fights and more, and with an area that includes descriptions about how she said she was afraid of Elon. She would lock herself in a room. She would start screaming and yelling that she was afraid that she was going to be accosted. Yeah, I think we've heard this story before, and it sounds like she was saying, hey, you leave me, I'm going to accuse you of something as well. Now, the book, it goes so far as to call her a nightmare, comparing her to the Joker. You and I, we're going to look at this section together. Oh, man, crazy times, huh? Crazy times indeed. All right, so hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing excellently. So the biography of Elon Musk, this is written by Walter Isaacson. It includes some crazy stuff about Amber Heard. Now, she's mentioned throughout the book in chapters about Grimes and more, but in the area Rocky Relationships from 2016 to 2017, with an entire section dedicated to Amber Heard and the craziness that comes along with being in a relationship with her, with latter parts that talk about fights, calling them quote-unquote flame throwing fights, with her being called a nightmare, basically saying that she destables everything, that she thrives on chaos, and she was going to falsely accuse if you tried to walk away. I mean, check this stuff out. I'm going to start at the beginning, so it's going to give some detail running to it. Yeah, I mean, this is something here. Quote, Musk was not bred for domestic tranquility. Most of his romantic relationships involve psychological turmoil. The most agonizing of them all was with the actress Amber Heard, who drew him into a dark vortex that lasted more than a year and produced a deep-seated pain that lingers to this day. Quote, it was brutal, he says. I mean, right away, you have some really bad descriptors for A.H. Now, I'm going to skip over the background information for the relationship, and I'm going to get to the parts where they actually expose who and what A.H. is. Listen to this stuff. Her playfulness, however, was accompanied by the type of turmoil that attracted Musk. His brother and friends hated her with a passion. So they hated her, and it says that their disdain for other people, it paled in comparison. So they're saying they hated her more than anyone else that they could describe like this. She was just so toxic. Kimball says, a nightmare. Musk chief of staff, Sam Teller, compares her to a comic book villain. She was like the Joker in Batman. She didn't have a goal or aim other than chaos. She thrives on destabilizing everything. She and Musk would stay up all night fighting, and then he would not be able to get up until the afternoon. They broke up in July 2017, but then got back together for another five tumultuous months. The end finally came after a wild trip to Rio de Janeiro that December with Kimball and his wife and some of the kids. So all this stuff that's being described here is happening with people seeing it, including children. When they got back to the hotel, Elon and Amber had another of their flamethrowing fights. She locked herself in the room and started yelling that she was afraid she would be attacked and that Elon had her passport. Again, she's saying, I'm going to accuse you of things. Oh, you're holding me hostage. Where have we heard that before? The security guards and Kimball's wife all tried to convince her that she was safe. Her passport was actually in her bag and that she could and should leave whenever she wanted. They wanted her to leave there. She's really a very good actress, so she will say things that you're like, wow, maybe she's telling you the truth, but 
she isn't. The way she can create her own reality reminds me of my dad. Let that sink in. Now, Amber herself actually responded to this, too. And it's fascinating because she gives admissions. Yes, there was a fight. Yes, she says, quote-unquote, I was dramatic, you know, screaming about being held hostage. He's keeping my passport. I don't feel safe. He's going to do terrible things to me. Yeah, that's beyond being a little bit dramatic, don't you think? But she says, well, you know, that wasn't that big of a deal. Why? Well, it all got resolved. And listen to this part and what she says here toward the end. It's crazy. They went to a party and celebrated the ringing in of the New Year, standing on the balcony over looking Rio. She in a low-cut white linen dress. He in a partly unbuttoned white linen shirt. Kimball and his wife were there, along with their cousin, Russ Rive, and his wife. And to show that they had made up, Amber sent pictures to this person and videos of the evening. And one of them, Elon, wishes her a happy new year and kisses her passionately on the lips. Look at what she says here then. She came to the conclusion that Musk cultivated drama. So everything's his fault. You notice, just like everyone else, because he needed a lot of stimuli to keep him invigorated. Even after the they broke up for good. The embers endured. I love him very much, she said. That's not what she said to people we heard in the Johnny Depp trial, by the way. She called him a placeholder, but she also understands him well. Elon loves fire. She's comparing herself to fire there, and sometimes it burns him. I mean, that that is a crazy statement. The fact that Elon was attracted to her was part of a pattern. It's really sad that he falls in love with these people who are really mean to him. They're beautiful, no question, but they have a very dark side, and Elon knows that they're toxic. So why does he do it? When I ask him, he lets out a large laugh. Because I'm just a fool for love. I'm often a fool, but especially for love. Now, there's one other fascinating portion here in which Grimes actually ends up calling out Amber Heard and saying, yeah, she's a monster, quote, my Dungeons and Dragons alignment would be chaotic good, whereas Amber's is probably chaotic evil. He, meaning Musk, of course, is attracted to chaotic evil. It's about his father and what he grew up with, and he's quick to fall back into being treated badly. He associates love with being mean or abusive. There's a father there, Errol Amber through line. So she's saying, you know, the reason that he likes that is because he had monsters in his past, just like Johnny Depp did. Hmm. I mean, there are a lot of parallels that are brought up too. And again, let me know what you think about this. But as far as proof goes, yeah, we have seen some craziness out there, haven't we? Thank you for being here, by the way. Appreciate you. Want to help out the channel? Share this everywhere. Also, check out links in the description. And thank you.